this is the title of, of my research. Um, I, at the time of starting the PhD, I had been in practice. My practice is called Fifth Studio. Um, we have a studio in Cambridge, which is where I studied and taught, uh, and in London too. Uh, so two locations in, in England. And after 15 years of work, uh, I started this practice, um, I started this PhD um, very much as a generalist. Um, I was interested in operating uh, as a generalist designer across the scales from architecture, interiors, uh, right through to landscape and, and infrastructure. Um, and I suppose we were, we've always been interested in, in uh, making a connection between the very immediate concrete scale of, of, of the world, the kind of, you know, this scale, door handles, and the city, the very large scale, and trying to make a kind of bridge between those two positions. Um, however, I suppose after 15 years of doing a very heterogeneous practice, our body of work, this is a page from our website, um, I was really interested in this thing about being a generalist because it's clients find it very, very difficult. Uh, it's a very difficult thing to explain. It's much easier if you're able to say, we do hospitals, we do schools, um, and there's a kind of transition from one project to another. If you say you do, you work across the scales from tiny things to very big things, it's, it's much tougher to know, to communicate what you do, but also to understand, I was very keen to see what the continuities were in the work through this very heterogeneous body of, of, of projects that we'd done. And the PhD, I suppose, I, I was very conscious, um, we interviewed some artists for a project that, um, uh, that we were working on as architects. Uh, and I was very conscious of the way that artists describe their body of work as an oeuvre, a very complete and closely guarded uh, body of work. Um, and I don't think archite architects are very bad at doing that. Um, and so I was interested in, in trying to understand what I'd been doing for 15 years uh, and in describing externally through communicating, sorting projects, um, projects that had been successful, projects that had failed, competitions, um, and so on and so on. Back the back catalogue, going through the archive and trying to trying to pull the threads that reappeared from project to project. Uh, and it was done through a, a number of means: through looking at drawings. We have a very rich drawing and modelling culture in in the studio. Um, we had a number of discussions within the practice about what it is that we do and how to describe it. Uh, we established things like a, an exhibition of our work and you know sort of built up this body of body of uh, the back catalog, the archive. Um, and then every six months I would come either to uh, to seminar sessions either in Ghent or latterly in, in Barcelona and present the research in progress. Um, to, to others, to a panel and, and peers doing similar things. And I became very conscious from this kind of exile of going away and talking about my work in other places in Europe with other colleagues who were from Australia, from other parts of the world, from, from Russia, from, from other parts of Europe. How particular my practice was looking back and that kind of experience of being in exile, I suddenly felt for the first time, how English my work was. And also, more than that, how particular my work was to uh, East Anglia, e a part of England in, in the east between London where one studio is and, and Cambridge where the other one is. So that was really interesting for me and how tied my work was to this landscape culturally in a co broader cultural sense about traditions of land use. And that this landscape is um, very, very diverse. It goes from, uh, you know, London itself with its, its extraordinary kind of global economy, 
uh, to Roman towns around its edge, to new cities, um, to a kind of hinterland of uh, a coastal region, to big farming areas. Um, so it is, like the practice, very heterogeneous. Um, and it's also probably one of the greatest concentrations of infrastructure, probably anywhere. So I was really interested in looking at that, those landscape traditions, traditions of making cities, uh, and working, realizing that our work happened in these kind of border conditions between, between places or on the edge of places or in very, very complex situations um, like this. Um, just to explain, one of our biggest projects is in this location, um, south of the Olympic, the London Olympic Park, in the, in the Lee Valley. And it's a good example of the kind of projects we get involved with. So it's it's a landscape project, but we're not landscape designers; we're architects. So um, these projects are very very complicated. Um, this is the Olympic Park. And this is the last um, maybe four or five kilometers of the valley before it hits the River Thames in, in London. Uh, so our projects typically uh, have very long durations. They're extremely complicated. They have many, many different clients. Uh, and uh, it was interesting to, to understand that. And I suppose to understand the kinds of knowledge that we have evolved as a practice um, to deal with projects that maybe take eight years, nine years to, to evolve. Um, and that, those kind of types of knowledge span from um, the tacit understanding of what kind of project it is through to um, evolving what we call a connoisseurship of place. So a kind of understanding of a landscape and its particularities, so working very closely with something that is understood in, in multiple different ways over a long period of time. So we uh, have become the kind of people who know more than anyone else probably about that landscape, its geology, its economies, its history, uh, and so on. And then thirdly, I suppose, um, being able to know how to make an impact. So a kind of practical knowledge about how you operate in complexity in, in terms of political complexity or physical complexity in order to make a difference, in order to make an impact. So trying to understand the kinds of knowledge that we develop in a project, this is a kind of map of our involvement in that Lee Valley project where the government changed the, the economy. This is the, the um, house price index in the UK with the crash, Lehman Brothers going bankrupt and the uh, going from an a economic boom to a bust, and how all of our clients change. So these are uh, quangos or uh, institutions that are set up as our clients and then disappear, and other people uh, become our clients. Um, a different mayor, um, a whole set of different kind of documents and uh, um, uh, policies that evolve over this time, and then our own involvement, which is very, very diverse from being um, starting with ordin an ordinary design project through to being advocates of the project, through to um, you know uh, acting uh, very politically, I suppose. So having a number of different roles across um, time, but I suppose uh, having a a very clear commitment to a place and a, and a project. And how uh, this is, I won't really go into this, but a kind of interest in narrative. So what holds complexity like that together over time? And how do you uh, keep uh, light on your feet? I don't know if that translates terribly well, but agile and yet tenacious. So, so the ability to uh, stay involved in a project like that when public procurement keeps ending your involvement and you have to get involved back again. Uh, so over time, making sure that you maintain an involvement is very hard. Uh, so an interest in narrative, the, the way in which a project unfolds and makes sense over a long period of time and gains political support. 
this is the research catalog. So just to talking about, uh, as Marcello uh, mentioned, the kind of outcomes of the research. Um, this is the, the this is the um, the document that goes off to be uh, read by the examiners, um, and I suppose uh, one of the things that I was really interested in that was was one of the discoveries of the research was uh, although my practice is really on the edge of the discipline, so I I've found it quite difficult to describe myself just as an architect, and not a qualified landscape architect but I'm interested in kind of working across that spectrum. Um, so I never really felt part of the architectural profession as a... Uh, um, I always felt sort of on the edge of the profession. However, I discovered through the process of the duty of care, so a kind of professional duty of care, that there was knowledge that we produced, that knowledge was safeguarded, but it was also used to a kind of practical effect. Um, and this is the kind of content of the um, research catalogue. So as Mar Marcello said, it, it's not um, writing particularly about, it's not a kind of academic document which is separate to practice. This was driven very much, as you can see, by things like case studies. So staying very, very close to the work, using the discoveries of each project, but also what links between each individual project, what the continuities are. Um, writing about some of the other themes that uh, are harder to find in the work and also using devices like uh, interviews with other people. Um, so this is a transcript of an interview with uh, an architectural critic called Ellis Woodman um, and, and a further interview with Shelley McNamara from Grafton Architects. So talking with peers about our work and also ideas about the work through, like infrastructure. Uh, and then finally, the, um, the uh, examination, so the kind of viva, which is a two hour event. My work is very much to do with the city and is very much to do with the kind of um, social conditions of, of the city. Uh, and so I chose to have my final presentation in this uh, extraordinary market hall in the medieval city of Ghent in Belgium. Uh, and I suppose one of the things was uh, defending my PhD in this kind of location at the center of the city and how accepting a kind of um, point where things like this that I couldn't control were going on around me. So things like a refuse truck or the bells of the cathedral or uh, trams going by or so so uh, a, a real um, uh, I felt it was necessary these are my examiners um, I felt it was necessary to put my PhD back into the city amongst stuff that I couldn't control uh, and one of the really fascinating things that happened at the end of the research catalog was that a number of our projects are self-initiated so that um, since the beginning of the practice, we've always invented projects. We've always um, provoked projects to happen. Um, and uh, I suppose through the research, it was possible to validate that as a, as a, as a method of finding work or moving into new territories for, for our practice. Um, and these were two of three projects that uh, were described at the end of the research catalog as possible projects. One of which is, is now a real project. Um, so this is Cambridge and we're working on this uh, major master plan on the, on the edge of the city, which is where the science park is. So it's a very, um, it's a very uh, key part of, of Cambridge. Uh, and we found a client um, over a course of two and a half years, we fin finally found somebody who would like to pay us to do this work. Um, so it's a kind of very interesting transition from a, a provocation, a project that came out of a proposition in the research, to something that has become a, a job, which may last 20, 20 years. Uh, and this is a, a speculation about a landscape that borders the the North Sea, which um, again, it's a much larger project. And again, it's interesting to think about potential clients for a project of that scale, which would be 
uh, a transnational project or something that may be in a European setting. So I suppose the confidence to invent projects or move the practice into a non-traditional architectural space. So I think I'll stop there, but I hope that's kind of given you something that I'd like to respond to.